I think that people with disabilities are left off the agenda. Jan Campbell has spent a lifetime overcoming adversity. She's unable to walk due to a rare childhood illness. She's concerned about plans for the new Burnside Bridge. The existing bridge only has a staircase connecting to the East Bank Esplanade. So Multnomah County included an elevator in their plans for a new bridge. The elevator, you know, there's lots of issues with the elevator. And Advocates want more than an elevator. So does the city. And while it appears that Multnomah County is now considering a ramp, cost is the major factor. The county has already been tasked with cutting about $200 million off the original price tag. And the current estimates put a new bridge at close to $800 million. They've already cut traffic lanes from five to four and cut space for bikes and pedestrians. Jan supports a proposed access ramp. It totally makes sense. And Portland City Council voted unanimously last month to spend about $20,000 to study how much a ramp would add to the overall Burnside Bridge budget. Commissioner Joanne Hardesty says Portland needs to look to Vancouver as an example. What they've done to their water fund is pretty phenomenal especially as we talk about climate mitigation, access to the waterway, access for people with disabilities. We can't forget all of that while we're rushing to a, uh, a, a finish line. Only 5% of downtown Portland has access to the river's edge. Willie Levinson and the Human Access Project have spent more than a decade advocating for improvements to access the river. Willie is thrilled the county is now at least considering a ramp. If we don't do this now, when are we going to do it? Older adults and persons living with a disability are in all communities. They're in all communities, and you need to start looking at them as part of your community. Access for everyone to a new Burnside Bridge is expected to come up when the city council takes public testimony on Thursday. Both Jan and Willie plan to offer their thoughts. Chris McGinnis, KGW News.